Hello and welcome to DW Kit. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use Form Builder to create interactive forms for business processes. The system's end users can complete various forms. For example, an employee can submit a vacation request by filling out the respective form. The Form Menu section is fully dedicated to creating a front end user interface and linking it to the data, which we'll do in our next video. And now we'll design a form layout. Let's go to the Manage Forms menu item. Here you can see a few forms for the current test process. Let's open a document edit form by double clicking on it. This is the Form Builder interface where you can drag and drop elements from the panel on the right to the work area in the middle to create custom forms. If you switch to the preview mode, you'll see how this form will appear to the end user. Let's switch back to the builder. The items on the right are divided into four groups. The first one is containers. They are blocks of linked elements that represent a separate form, menu, HTML div, or custom blocks. Collections are spreadsheet elements, grids and tables. Controls contain the main building blocks of forms, and here you can see a list of standard interface elements input fields, drop-down lists, radio buttons, etc. And charts let you add different types of charts to the form. To add an element to the form, drag and drop a control to a drop zone in the middle. A tool panel will appear above it with a set of buttons that let you change its position by dragging it to another drop zone, edit the settings, duplicate or delete the element. Let's look at the settings of the input control. From the General tab, you can set the following parameters. The input field name. You won't see it in the interface, but it's very important to give it a distinct name because it'll be used to bind this field to a data model and to identify it on the client side. The field data type. This can be text, number, password, file, if you want users to select a file from their local disk and attach it to the form, date, time, or both date and time format. The field label, which is input by default. Label position will change the position of the label, whether it should be placed to the left of the field or to the right, according to the interface you're creating. You can add an example in the placeholder field. This text will be grayed out and it'll disappear when you activate the cursor in this field. Use it as a hint to help users work with the form. Options will change the style of the input field. For example, Fluid will make this element responsive to the screen size, and Transparent will make the input field outline invisible. Size will adjust the size of the element and text font. The general settings for different elements may vary slightly, but the options are usually self-explanatory. In the Style tab, you can fine-tune the look of this form element by specifying dimensions and margins. Also, you can add a custom CSS class to the element, or hard-code cascade styles in this field. You can hide the element if you check this checkbox. The Event tab shows control events, you can specify one or more actions that will be carried out upon interacting with the form element. Here you can select one of the predefined actions. To check out the full list, click the link below this video. Otherwise, you can select your own action. You'll learn how to create actions in one of our upcoming videos. In the Others tab, you can mark this checkbox to make this form mandatory. The default value will be added to this input field when opening the form. Under Custom Validation, you can insert a JavaScript function that'll pass the input or return an error prompting the user to enter the correct value. You can use regular expressions in this function. Visible Condition allows you to determine whether this field is shown or hidden. Read Only Condition will determine whether this field is editable or not. Click Save down below if you want to save the control properties. After you've made changes to the form, 
click Save at the top to apply and store the changes. You can download and upload forms in JSON format using the respective buttons at the top. By pressing the Workflow button, you'll be able to associate this form with an existing workflow scheme. You can also bind this form with a particular workflow state, but we'll cover that in our tutorial on Business Flow. In the Security section, you can associate the form with a set of permissions. Right now we don't have any specific permissions, but when we get to the security topic, this field will become usable. Also, you can save this form as a template and build typical forms quicker by checking this checkbox. Later on, you can insert this template into another form and modify it. That'll allow you to create a set of building blocks for your user interface to create forms faster and achieve a more unified look. After you finish editing the form, don't forget to click Save before you go to another panel in DWKit. Now let's create a new form from scratch. First, create a new form for a document. Add a form block. It'll improve our form's appearance and will automatically adjust vertical spacing and input field styles, as well as the other elements within. We can also set its width to 50% so it looks neat. Add an input field. Name it Name. It'll be used in the code for displaying data. That's why it has to be named appropriately. Another suggestion for code names is no spaces or special characters, but this is already one word. Copy it to the label field. This field will be mandatory for submitting the form, so check the required checkbox on the Other tab. To add a new field, we can drag and drop new input or duplicate the first field. This will display the document state, so name it accordingly. Later on, when we bind this form to our workflow, this field will show the document state automatically. Therefore, check the Read Only checkbox. On the Other tab, set the default value to Draft. Next, Drag and drop a form group to place two fields on the same line next to each other. Name the third field Amount, but this time set its type to Number, and add a custom validation. Type Value Greater Than Zero. Later on, users will be able to enter only positive values into this field. Oh, and this field will be required as well. Let's add a Date Input field. Set its type to date and make it required. Add a text area below for comments and check the Auto Height checkbox. We're almost done, but let's also add a few buttons to submit this form. We're going to add three buttons for saving, quitting, and for both actions combined. Drag and drop a button, name it Save, and make it Primary. On the Events tab, check the OnClick checkbox and add the following actions, Validate and Save. You can see how the Primary button automatically changes its style to reddish-orange. Add an Exit button, and make it secondary. On the Events tab, check the OnClick checkbox and add Exit. Add a Save and Exit button and make it secondary as well. Name it Save and Exit without spaces because it'll be used in the code. The label can include spaces and special characters to make it more readable. On the Events tab, check the OnClick checkbox 
and add the actions validate, save, and exit. As you can see, here you can combine actions and build execution chains. All the actions we use today are available in DWKit with no coding required. Last but not least, click Save in the upper left before leaving this window. This is really important if you want to save the changes. And now you can click Preview. And here it is, our first form. Before we let you go, we'd like to add a few words about the technology under the hood. Form Builder uses React, Semantic UI, and Chart.js to generate web forms. Using these technologies, we can easily design responsive web forms. Now you know how to design forms. At this stage, we've created interface elements, but these forms aren't linked with any actual data. Today, we've shown you how to use Form Builder to create interactive forms for your business processes. In our next video, we'll bind the data model object we created earlier with the fields we've created just now, so the visual representation will be linked clearly with the data structure. Thanks for watching. Give this video a like and subscribe to the OptimaJet channel to stay up to date with our latest tutorials.